Hi everybody, thanks for watching. I'm Henna, and today I'm going to be talking about Remarkable People by Italie Bourdonage. This is a house that's known for uh, making perfumes or naming perfumes in a very provocative kind of way. So Secrétion Magnifique is their most um, I guess talked about perfume one that people say that you should definitely smell i have samples of a few of their perfumes and this actually ended up being a complete blind buy blind buy based on the review in this book this is perfumes the guide by tanya sanchez and luca turin it's the 2018 version there's an earlier version as well i do have both of them i highly recommend them not so much for their perfume reviews but that they have really short interesting descriptions so for me i like to be inspired for how i can describe perfumes or have a vocabulary when it comes to talking about perfumes and i find sometimes reading other people's descriptions really really um inspiring so that's what I love about this perfume. I don't read it, or this book, I don't read it often, but I do enjoy picking it up every now and then. Uh, the description of Remarkable People says that this is like Fanta Orange, that's the short version, and Remarkable People got four out of five possible stars, so that is a pretty good rating. Now, Luca Turn has said that this is a citrus fragrance that has slightly screechy top note fizz, but has an unusually rich and pleasant Fanta Accord underneath. Nice work, is what he said. So, personally, having had a lot of Fanta in my life, I don't think that this really reminded me of Fanta. In fact, I bought this, or I got this perfume, I forgot about it, I tried it on, Fanta was definitely not what came to my mind when I wore it and when I tried it. Um, I got that it's very fizzy. I know that champagne is listed as one of the notes and grapefruit is listed as one of the top notes. And I definitely got kind of a fizzy grapefruit soft drink vibe when I wore this perfume. And actually, I felt like there was a little bit saltiness to that to that note and a, there is an underlying saltiness to this whole perfume that really makes it interesting and almost addictive to smell every time every time you spray it and it's addictive in the way that salt is addictive you know you just if you're eating anything salty like chips or fries that is something that you know you just keep wanting to experience that hit of it again and again and again and i felt like there was that quality in this perfume i wouldn't necessarily call it salty like um the Joe Malone sea salt perfume, and I wouldn't say that salt is one of the notes, but I would say that the notes seem to have an almost savory quality to them that I would describe as being salty. So yeah, the grapefruit in this is beautiful, it's wearable, it's fresh, and I can see it working really, really well in the summertime. However, even in the winter when, you know, right now I've been reaching for all my warm, cozy amber perfumes, I still like this as kind of a... I guess nose freshener. I like that it's a little bit more fresh, completely different from everything else that's kind of in my rotation right now. And the grapefruit is what makes it a little bit different than some of my other perfumes. Now on this side is where I've had the perfume on for a few hours. And one of the other notes that's in this perfume is curry and jasmine. Now, as an Indian person who eats a lot of curry, I, I can't say that there really is a curry note that's discernible to my nose. And I've asked other people to smell this perfume on me, and I don't think that they can smell it either because no one said anything. I know quite a few people that are very sensitive to that curry note, especially if it's in something like Immortal. Um, you know, Immortal can read as uh, having kind of a fenugreek vibe, or it can be kind of a sweet maple syrup 
and also that fenugreek and I don't think that that is what I'm smelling here and you know the problem with using curry as a descriptor is that really there's so many kinds of curry there's like a southern curry that's more coconut based there's a northern curry that's going to be more butter and milk based or cream based you know and different different spices used in both of those and so you can't really say curry without specifying what kind of curry you're talking about there is a curry leaf that is used in Indian cooking, um, but again, mostly in the South, not really in the North. So it's really hard to say curry without, without it being just even more confusing. I think either curry leaf or fenugreek works really well, or sometimes people really mean to say cumin, and maybe that's, that's more apt if there's cumin in this fragrance. But regardless of any of those uh, minor details, there's really, not a lot of curry or immortel or any of that that I can smell in this fragrance. There is jasmine, there is a really nice labdanum and sandalwood dry down that is almost creamy, but that salty fizziness kind of stays throughout the whole wear of this fragrance and it does wear pretty well and for a pretty long time, at least to me. I don't have a problem with fragrance not lasting on me and I would say that this lasts on me for a number of hours. I wore it <clears throat> out to dinner last week and I was out for three or four hours. I could smell it the whole entire time. I've worn it during the day and I can smell it here and there as the day goes on. So that would be, you know, six or eight hours. So I personally don't have a problem with the lasting power of this perfume. I would say that the sillage isn't great. This isn't something that's going to fill a whole room. It's not going to project even when you first spray it. You know, you don't smell it for far away or for a long time, but that's okay. I think it works really well as kind of what I like to think of now as a business fragrance. Like this would be really good if you are at work and you don't want to wear something that's too, um, that stands out too much, you kind of want to wear something that's interesting, but can also stay more in the background. I think this is a great fragrance for that. It's not your typical citrus in that it's all top notes and no base notes. So it does evolve over time, which is really nice. I think it's really unisex despite the jasmine in it, which is great. Um, really works for all weathers, all situations, and that's why I like to call it a business fragrance. It kind of reminds me of staying in a hotel that's for business. So if you've ever traveled for business, you know that a business hotel is a lot different from like a resort vacation-y hotel. A business hotel is going to give you all the amenities without you really having to ask for it, but it's also not going to be um, really... Uh, driven by a certain vibe or personality. It's going to want to be something that appeals to a great number of people that are kind of not wanting to be uh, distracted by a lot of different details. And I think this perfume is really good at doing that. It's not that so interesting that it's distracting, but it is interesting enough that it doesn't smell boring. You know, it's definitely not a boring perfume. It is a really beautiful, wearable perfume. And yeah, I think this was a successful blind buy and I think it would be a successful blind buy for anybody that would wear it. I normally don't recommend blind buying anything and I still stand by that. I think that it's a slippery slope. There's a lot of money to be wasted. It's always safer to buy something that you've tried and you know you will like. But 30 ml is a nice little size that will be used up pretty quickly. And this is a really wearable perfume and a very yummy but kind of salty perfume. That's how I would describe it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.